now to the misdemeanor trial for Steve Bannon. Moments ago, jury selection resumed in the contempt of Congress trial of the former Trump White House chief strategist. Today's events come after a long day of jury selection yesterday, with many D.C. residents in the jury pool saying exactly what they thought of him. Let's bring in NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams. Pete, what stood out yesterday and what can we expect moving forward? Yeah, several of the jurors, Mika, did say they knew about Steve Bannon. They didn't like some of his comments. They didn't like the people he associated with. They said they didn't like his statement during his podcast that he was going to make his uh, uh, assault on the government's case medieval. Uh, so they were all excused, needless to say, from the potential jury pool. But they did get it down to 22, and today it will be whittled down to the final number of, of jurors. And then the government will begin presenting its case. And the government says its case is straightforward, that he got a subpoena and he didn't obey it. And they will call at most, they say, three witnesses, an FBI agent who investigated uh, what Bannon did and, they say, his refusal to testify, and two of the committee counsel from the January 6th committee, one, maybe two of those. And then that's the government says that's it. Bannon's defense has been seriously cut back by the judge. Uh, this is a Trump appointee, Carl Nichols. But he has said that Steve Bannon, and here he has cited some, some uh, appeals court precedent, that Steve Bannon cannot argue that he was simply following the advice of his lawyer when he declined to respond to the subpoena, <clears throat> that he can't argue that the Justice Department's longstanding policy when it comes to subpoenaing uh, administration officials is that they can't be subjected to subpoena by Congress. The judge says, you know, you weren't an administration official at the time, and the committee doesn't want to know about things that happened when you were in the government. They want to know about things that happened right around January 6th that he cannot uh, subpoena members of Congress and can't argue that the January 6th committee was improperly constituted. Uh, so for all these reasons, his defense has been cut back. Now, one of the things that the judge has left the door open to is Bannon arguing that the committee said, the, here's the deadline, but then kept saying, but we still want to hear from you. And the question is, did that, in essence, sort of blur what the deadline was and just sort of keep pushing it out? and allow Bannon to argue that uh, he just was confused about what the deadline was. So his defense, though, has been cut back significantly by the, by the judge's ruling. Well, Pete, just as a matter of law, it seems that Steve Bannon's box stand, this is pretty, pretty cut and dry, isn't it? I think so. I mean, his own lawyer apparently thinks so, because as you probably know, at a hearing last week, when, when the judge had issued a lot of these rulings cutting back on potential defenses, his lawyer said, you know, I'm not sure what the point is of having a trial if there's not much of a defense. And the judge said, agreed, which was sort of a signal that Bannon ought to think about pleading guilty and cutting his losses. But Bannon obviously wants to go ahead and have a trial. Uh, now, uh, and candidly, uh, clearly, uh, his defense lawyers are trying to preserve a lot of these issues for appeal. But um, that w obviously would be well down the road. And it's also well to remember that if Steve Bannon is convicted, it doesn't mean he has to testify before the committee. It simply is the punishment for declining to obey the committee's subpoena. It doesn't, if, if he is convicted, he doesn't have to testify. It's simply the punishment for not testifying.